Did you know that the pre-colonial walled city of Manila was burned down to the ground 450 years ago? Who set fire to Manila and why did they reduce this once majestic city into ashes? Wait lang! If you prefer to watch this video in Tagalog, don't forget to check out the links up here or down below for the Tagalog version of this video. Now back to our topic. Mabuhay or in Kapampangan, luwid kayo. May 24, 2020 marked the 450th anniversary of the burning down of Manila in 1570. It was the first bloody encounter between the Rajas of Manila and the Spanish conquistadors. The Spanish conquistadors arrived in Manila in May of 1570 to beg the kings of Manila to allow them to permit them to settle and participate in trading in Luzon. They marveled at the first sight of the city of Manila, a majestic city that they had long desired to to conquer. But after a few days of friendly negotiations, everything ended up in a battle, a bloodshed that resulted in the burning down of the ancient walled city of Manila. Tondo and Manila were the center of power in Luzon, which was among the most prosperous kingdoms of pre-colonial Southeast Asia. The Manila Bay, or Lusong as it was known to Kapampangans, was one of the most important entrepots or center of international trading in Southeast Asia. They also had the monopoly of trading with Imperial China. Luzon was also rich in agriculture, an abundant land that could feed and sustain thousands of people. Apart from its wealth and prosperity, the Spaniards also learned about Manila's weapons and impressive fortifications. A fortified capital city with formidable defenses that the Spaniards badly needed for their imperial ambitions in Asia. It was no secret that the Spaniards were eager to conquer the wealthier and prosperous kingdoms of Luzon. And so, five years after they conquered the Visayas, Martin de Goiti led a Spanish expedition to Luzon. Luzon, during this time, was ruled by my own ancestors, the brothers Raja Matanda of Manila and Lacandula of Tondo, the revered and powerful paramount kings of Luzon, along with their nephew, Raja Suleiman, the Raja Muda or Crown Prince of Manila. The Spaniards swore to the Rajas that they had no intentions of conquering Luzon, that they only came peacefully to settle and partake in the booming international trade in Manila Bay. So it was not surprising that the kings of Manila, the Rajas of Manila, were open to become friends with the Spaniards. After all, Raja Matanda himself had encountered, he had met the Spaniards way back in 1521, 49 years before Martin de landed in Manila Bay. But of course, our ancestors were not that dumb. They were not naive because they had long been aware of the cruelties of the Spanish to their colonies in the Visayas and the mischievous tendencies of the conquistadors. From the very beginning, Raja Suleiman gave them a warning to never ever harm any of our people. He threatened the Spaniards with bloodshed that he would not tolerate any abuse to his people, like the abuses the colonizers had done in the Visayas. And despite the friendly negotiations, we must not assume that Tondo and Manila easily surrendered to the Spaniards. In fact, while the negotiations were still happening, La Candula of Tondo was already Ready, preparing his forces in case a battle erupted and the warriors of Manila were also prepared they remained on high alert in the event that the Spaniards betrayed their gestures of friendship and on May 24th 1570 a bloody battle erupted the once prosperous and wealthy ancient city of Manila was engulfed in flames it was reduced to ashes within just one day and because of this the Spaniards declared their so-called victory in conquering Manila. But within just three days after the battle, the Spaniards left in a hurry because in reality, they had no capacity to effectively control and hold Manila. Martin de Goiti proudly claimed responsibility for the order to burn down Manila. However, most people actually believe that it was Raja Suleiman himself who gave the order to burn down the city, setting fire to their own cities and fortifications was a highly effective tool, a traditional war tactic of our indigenous ancestors so that the enemies would not benefit from the wealth, the weapons, and the fortified walls of Manila. 
If we think about it, why would the Spaniards burn down Manila when they have long obsessed with taking over its wealth? When for many years they have been preparing to seize control of its weapons and formidable defenses. When from the very beginning they have marveled at its beauty and majestic fortifications. In fact, the colonial walled city of Intramuros de Manila was built right above the ruins of the ancient fortifications of Manila. And many of Manila's cannons, gunpowder, and firearms were looted and taken by the Spaniards. Unknown to many of us, our ancestors already had firearms and gunpowder before colonialism. Long before the Spaniards even arrived, the pre-colonial Kapampangans were already exporting firearms, cannons, and gunpowder across Asia. We must also remember that Manila and Tondo were already prosperous, wealthy, and powerful. It had an estimated population of between 43,000 to 80,000 people when the Spaniards arrived. It was also said that Manila had somewhere between 10,000 to 12,000 warriors in 1570. So if you think about it, Tondo and Manila were actually far bigger, wealthier, and more prosperous if you compare it to the Spanish capital city of Madrid in the 1500s. From the very beginning, the promises of friendship from the colonizers were never to be trusted. The Spaniards were eager to conquer the prosperous kingdoms of Luzon. They were eager to take control of the highly important monopoly of trade in Manila Bay, in Tondo and Manila which they eventually achieved in the decades that followed through mischief and violence. Many Filipinos grew up with stories of Manila easily surrendering to the Spaniards, but that's far from the truth. Like what I always say, there are still so many things that we need to learn and unlearn about our own past, about the histories of our people. So always remember to know your roots and know history, know self. You may also tune in for my upcoming book about the ancient Luzones, about the forgotten past of my own ancestors. And that is it for me today. If you like this video and learn a thing or two, don't forget to like, share this video, comment, and subscribe. And if you want to help me make more videos like this, show your support, and please be my patron or get a copy of my book. Dakal pong salamat! See you next time on Tagalog Kita Kit and in Kapampangan, Miki Ticks!